Oh, I'll need to edit that part out. I need to at least look kind of smart for this video. So guys, I was getting set up for Newswave. As you can see, I was getting everything set up over here. Lighting and everything. But I had a couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about. So over the past, I'd say, week or so, I've been kind of looking around at a lot of rumors and trying to figure out, because there's so many people saying it's Maxwell-based. There's so many people saying it's Pascal-based. X1s, P1s, or X2s, whatever you're going to call them. And no one seems to know what it is, like what chip it's using, the switch that is. And it's weird to see all of these rumors flying around out there. Well, today, tonight, whatever it is, I'm going to do my best to try to help you guys realize and understand why these rumors are so heavy and why they can't seem to come to the determining factor on what it is, the system. And I'm actually going to show you what I believe the dev kit is. And what I think they're what I think they're doing is there's a couple different versions out there, but I think it's mostly based around this dev kit. And before you click off this video, no, I'm not going to hit something with a hammer. This is an actual video about actual dev kits, so uh, stay tuned. We'll take a look at one right now. So here we go, guys. Meet the Jetson TX1. This is actually Nvidia's development kit. Basically, they send this, or you can you can actually buy it. Also, I I assume a lot of the studios who are developing games probably had to buy this thing to be honest. It's not expensive. They might have sent some of these to the bigger teams, obviously, the bigger companies that are building for their games in the Switch. Nintendo may have fronted it. Nvidia might have fronted it. Who knows? All we know is there are dev kits. I believe this Jetson TX1 is what most of them are based on, or, honestly, it's this TX1. So I'm going to read the specs to you for this Jetson TX1, and tell me if it sounds familiar at all to you. It's capable, overall, the GPU is, of one teraflop of performance. It has 256 CUDA cores, Maxwell architecture, interesting, 64-bit ARM A57 CPUs, that would be in a quad-core configuration, 4 gigs of low-power DDR4 RAM at 25.6 uh, gigabytes a second. That sounds oddly familiar. Going down from there, does do 4K at 60 hertz for video decode, video encode, 4K 30 hertz. All you need to know is that it is capable of 4K video. That's all you need to know about those. It is capable of HDMI and DisplayPort. Interesting. Connects to 802.11 AC and Bluetooth enabled devices. Interesting, right? Because the switch in the FCC filing and everything has been found to use AC wireless. The other part that's pretty funny is it has a gigabit Ethernet LAN port. Uh, if you remember some of the other leaks from before, there were reports that the dev kits had Ethernet ports, whereas the hands-on units for the Switch do not have Ethernet ports. Again, seems to fit that mold. Honestly, if you look at this dev kit, this TX1, it fits everything. It is, more than likely, the dev kit they're using. And this is where it gets really interesting because this dev kit has actually been around for a long time. It came out back in around the beginning of 2015, actually, somewhere in there. And it's been used for a while now. In fact, I, get, I can pretty much tell you that anyone who's been developing for the Switch at all now has probably been using this board. And I bet you, I bet you, this is what the rumors in July are based off of is this board. And now we have new reports, rumors again, saying that the dev kits for October are more powerful than the dev kits from July. Okay, interesting, because here's my theory on this. This is... This whole video is heavily speculated, obviously. It's all speculation because I think I found the dev kit they're using. I'm telling you guys this is what I think it is, but here's where it gets really interesting. The dev kits for October are more powerful than the dev kits from July. This is the dev kit I think the July rumor is based on. I think the dev kits that they have in October is the unannounced Jetson TP1 for Pascal. I think they're running on Pascal now, and nobody is saying that. They're still sticking to the X1 story in July, and nobody is saying what these new October dev kits are based on. I think they're Pascal-based. I think that's why it's more powerful, because I think it's running Pascal. Even if it's lower frequencies, it would still be more powerful, and I think they're going to achieve this one teraflop performance with lower frequencies. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, the Jetson TX1 is available for the public to buy. Why wouldn't the TP1 be available? I think it's being announced at CES 2017. I think it's being announced this week coming up. I think we'll get the new, sh the new Shield TV Android box that they're putting out. They're putting out two of them, supposedly, is the leak. And I think this TP1 will quietly, quietly be announced for developers to use. So I think, I think, again, 
the Eurogamer frequencies, if let's just let's just go on a whim and say they're correct. Let's just say that. Oh, they're correct. I think are based around the time when those came out, those frequencies were sent to developers. I think those frequencies, if they're correct, are for a Pascal based chipset. And then that could make sense because they can get away with frequencies that are lower than the Maxwell based set and still achieve the same performance. And they'll actually have a much better like uh, battery consumption and life to it, and the heat will be less. Honestly, I think this is it. I think I I, I don't want to say I figured it out, but I I think this is what's happening. I sent a couple people. I sent all right. So most more publicly, I sent Laura Kate Dale a question, and I said, "Is this the dev kit that that the rumors were based on in July?" I didn't expect her to answer me because that is super transparent. If she said yes, let's say that is the case. I think whoever her source was telling her would have been narrowed down heavily because that means that they got pretty in depth with the dev kit. Maybe she didn't see it. Maybe she just heard X1 or whatever, you know, maybe, maybe they didn't see all the specs for it. Jetson TX1, I think is the dev kit from July. I think this new Jetson TP1 that will be announced this week is what they're using currently. So take from with you. Well, guys, like I said, it's just speculation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, it's it's kind of a cool look into it. There's a lot of cool videos on YouTube. I remember looking at the TX1 a while ago just because I was playing around with Android apps and trying to get back into coding, which I've never really been interested in. Uh, and the dev kit's kind of expensive. It's about anywhere from five to six hundred dollars. It's not cheap. It isn't, but it's a cool look into it. Check it out if you get some time. It's the it's the Jetson TX1 developers kit from Nvidia, and they have a whole thing you can load up Jetpack and you can basically go on there and, and develop and program stuff all you want. It's actually pretty cool. So check it out. It's also worth noting the Maxwell Jetson TX1 draws about 10 watts of power, which isn't bad, but drawing that much power on a battery would be kind of tough. And I do see Pascal eliminating that barrier. So we'll know. See, I want to say we'll know, but we might not because, all right, I think we'll know more at CES if NVIDIA comes out with the TP1 and the new... Uh, the new Android TV. Sorry, the new Android TV. That's what I think we'll know more. I don't think we'll know more at Nintendo's presser. So keep an eye on this, guys. Like I said, enjoy. like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And we'll have News Wave tomorrow morning. I'll see you guys then.